Hello, and welcome to Embrace the Suck Outdoors. I'm your host, Doug Rigoni, and the first of what I hope will be many videos that I'm able to put out for you guys before I go on this hunt in the next couple weeks. Um, I decided to, to put a few videos out there because I'm, I'm starting to see, for me anyway, what seems to be biased from a lot of the big names in hunting, especially Western hunting lately, um, and the gear reviews that they're doing. There seems to be bias as to what gear they like based on who is sponsoring them, which is, you know, obviously completely understandable. But what I want to do was start videos that would give honest opinions and, um, you know, no holds bars on, on equipment and why I use equipment. But I think for the first video, it's appropriate for me to do a pack dump, as so many people do, um, just to give you an idea of the overall, what I'm bringing on this. This year, I will be out in Montana for an early season uh, archery elk hunt um, for seven days and this is the entire setup that I am bringing with me. Uh, my base weight minus food and water is sitting right around 37 pounds um, including the pack um, with my food for the seven days and water for the initial walk-in. Um, I calculate out that I will be I have around 55, 56 pounds on my back um, for the walk-in and then obviously will drop off substantially when I uh, drop my camp. So um, without further ado, I'll get on to what, uh, what I'm carrying this year and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So first and foremost, the backbone of any, any system is, is the pack. Um, I run Kafaru packs. I've ran a lot of different packs in the past. Um, Kafaru for me has uh, been the best pack for fit, feel, um, distribution of weight, um, and everything else you can think of. So durability, um, I, I you know, they, and they're American made, uh, which is another, another great aspect for me. So, um, I'm running the fulcrum, um, with the organizer guide lid on my side hip belts. I have, um, a mystery ranch, I believe, um, bear spray holster. I have the Kafaru Nalgene bottle holder on that side. Then I have a small, um, hip pocket or, um, pouch for, for the side here. Um, along with that as well, I have my, um, this is the pack, the rain cover for, for the pack. I know the pack looks full right now. It's actually got just a pillow and a, and a big, uh, 50 pound bag of pellets in there for training right now, but that's all that's in this, but everything else will fit in. So it's about this size, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, moving on to my sleep system for this year. Um, this year I am running the Kuyu Mountain Star 2P tent. Um, I used it one for a few years and it's just not quite quite big enough for the weight and durability and everything else this is a this is a great tent um, I also run a uh, fall raven uh, abisco 2 it's a tunnel tent similar to uh, Hilleberg but um, um, but for this year I'll be running the, the standalone tent here um, this is a static V from um, Clement sleeping pad. I believe it's got an R value of like six and a half. Um, I do tend to sleep a little cold even though I am a big guy. So this really, really helps out with, with that. And then underneath here I have just the, the footprint for the, for the tent. Uh, moving on to my food and water, my cooking system. I run a three liter big zip platypus. I keep my pack all the time. I know some people um, don't run them like from I, I personally just from my experiences in the military and um, and out in the woods, I, I drink a ton of water. So um, I, I like that in my pack along with a hard a hard bottle as well. I also run a Nalgene, which I think most people do. It's always good to have a hard bottle no matter what you do in the, in the mountains, um, just in case, because these things break, these things are, are almost indestructible unless they get uh, cold and freeze and crack. My stove is the MSR wind burner, two liter, one liter, one liter here. Self-contained, everything I need in there. Um, does a really, really good job. Boils water, um, even quicker than jet boil. Does a very, very, very good job of boiling water. That's all you do. Um, for my food, I, I, I'll do one dehydrated meal a day and that's it. Everything else is, is, so that's all, and a cup of coffee in the morning. That's all I need to boil water for is one, one meal in the afternoon and then um, one cup of coffee in the morning along with a protein shake is what I have there. So um, one can of fuel is more, more than enough. Then, what I could possibly use in, in a week out there. I could probably get 10, 12 days out of a, out of a can if I really needed to, to stretch a smaller can. So um, along with that in my 
And for all my, a lot of the stuff I have, I packed in here. These are the Kaparo Ultra Light Pullouts. Again, great products. Not waterproof, but definitely water resistant. I got my Tokes um, Titanium Cup. Everyone has a cup, I know they do. Um, this is what I found. I got this on Amazon. It was just a cheap one. It's served me well for a few, few years now. Um, then I have the Tokes Long Titanium Spoon. Again, um, I think everyone uses a long spoon if you haven't, you know. You go with a short spoon and, you know, when you're doing dehydrated meals, um, you know, right away, the next first thing you buy before the next time you go, it's a long spoon so you don't get your fingers all dirty. So, um, and then in there, I just have these tablets. These are quick, quick towels. They're just little tablets that you get wet. I use it to clean up my, my stuff and everything else like that. Ultra light, do a great job of packing it in there. I also carry um, a set of baby wipes with me at all times. That's just something, again, from being in the military and long, long hikes, everything else like that. They're, they're great for all kinds of stuff, so um, baby wipes and those little towels are more than enough to keep everything clean for the for the duration of the hunt for, for this long anyway. Moving on from the from the cook system, um, up front here I have my um, battery chargers. I run a Gold Zero Nomad Seven Plus solar panel. Um, it's a hard it's a hard cover. These are great. You could put them on top of your pack. Put them on top of your um, on top of your tent during the day um, along with that I have the in this pack and this is this is always on me when I'm this is part of my you know if you want to call it a possible pouch that I always have in my in my pack with me um, you know and, and it goes along with that this usually stays at the camp but um, I also have the charger I don't know this is the Venture 30 um, one charge on this I can charge my cell phone and I can charge the, the inReach I don't know two, three times on this, no problem. Complete charges, those two go together and, and work really well. For my, um, and then of course, everyone has a glassing pad. I think most people carry one of these. This is just a thermo rest seat. Um, super, super ultra light. You know, there's no reason not to carry that with you. It weighs absolutely nothing. And um, when you're sitting down, it's it's really nice to sit on something other than, other than the ground sometimes. For my trekking poles, I'm admittedly not a huge trekking pole guy. Um, I bring them with me. Um, if we do, if we do end up hauling something out, you know, if we are successful, they are great for heavy, heavy loads in the back there. But from the time I walk out of the, out of the truck until, um, you know, basically I'm walking back, my bow's in my hand the whole time. So um, I'm not one to put a bow on my back um, for a number of reasons. One, you never know when you're going to come across something walking in. Two, you know, you're just, you're just setting up to possibly damage the bow, I would think, in the back there. So um, that's just my personal preference on it. But I do bring these with me. These are just Odyssey, um, Odyssey Ultralights. I got these, I think, on Amazon. Um, I haven't brought, I haven't been able to bring myself to pay the couple hundred dollars for a set of um, trekking poles that, you know, I honestly don't use too, too much. But um, these are Odyssey Carbon Fiber. I think they're 14 ounces for the pair. I mean, they're as light as any of the ones you're going to out there. Um, they do the trick, and I have yet to have any, any issues whatsoever with them. Uh, moving along, along here. So this is my, excuse the paper, I got my, my numbers and stuff on there for, for you guys. Um, so this is what I would call my possible pouch. This is a combat lifesaver bag that I got when I was in the military. Um, when I was a combat lifesaver. This bag has three compartments in it, and within these three compartments, I ha have everything I need. I have my, um, uh, so so I, I carry my water with me all the time. This is the platypus, um, excuse me, my filter. This is the platypus um, gravity filter. I believe the two liter is what this is. Um, I've used a pump in the past. If you have the ability to be able to, you know, soak a bag in water, for the dirty water, this is the way to go over over a pump, and anyone that's pumped before knows that. But that's what I'll be carrying this year out in Montana. I will bring the pump just in case, but um, in all likelihood, this is what I'll be running. But this is always with me. So these this whole pack is always in the bag with me. This is basically what I carry with me when I when I leave camp in the morning. It's all encompassing here. So top bag here. This is my um, bow repair kit, extra string, serving D loop. I got a knife sharpener in there. I got my Allen wrench key bow wax, um, extra broadheads, a couple small game heads in there. Um, I have my Kuyu, what I've done with these to make them smaller. These are my um, game bags, and this is all four quarter game bags to include. There's four quarter game bags and then two zip game bags um, for 
for a trim me in there. Um, and what I do is I put them in, in this pouch and then I vacuum seal them and they get really, really small in there. And then when you're ready to use them, you just cut them open and you're good to go. Um, got my knife. This is just a repair kit for the for the pack. Everything that I would need that would possibly break on this pack. I've never had anything break on this pack, period. So just in case though, those are extra parts on there. Extra dead down wind, um, uh, wind detector, smoke in a bottle, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. Um, dropped one of these in the woods before. You know, it's always good to have an extra one. Um, and then of course an, an extra release for the bow, um, in case you ever need that. So that's my what I what I call my kill kit compartment, but it's, you know I got a few extra extra things in there. Uh, the next pouch here, this is my um, so this is my real possible pouch. This is the top, the, everything that I have that could possibly go wrong. I don't know what I have in here. So emergency matches. I got a just a little Leatherman K, uh, that goes in there. A little multi tool. Um, those are have come in handy in the past. Um, Aquamira drops just in case. You run into problems with your water, and then uh, my possible spots. I won't get everything that's in here, but you know I got an extra backup headlamp, tenacious tape, um, lighters, duct tape, um, and things of things of that nature. So, uh, but I won't get into that. That's that's for another video. I'll go go in depth with why I carry and what I have in there, um, and then of course my emergency my emergency kit. So me being a military guy, I always carry a cat tourniquet. Um, this thing will save somebody's life if you get into a bad situation. Um, this thing is very, very good at what it does. So um, me personally, it weighs nothing. I got used to carrying one overseas. Um, these things are, are really, really good. I highly encourage anybody that goes into the woods. Um, I had a friend one time that was um, gutting a deer and ended up stabbing himself in the leg, cutting his femoral artery. Um, he ended up putting a tourniquet on and he was fine. but. Um, one of these things real works really really well for something like that instead of having to improvise a tourniquet if you if you need one um got some uh, cell locks in here hemostatic agent for those who don't know it basically quick clot does a really good job of this that's made from um shrimp shells but um i have decompression needles for um for collapse lung in case you someone gets a fall or something like that fingernail clippers extra um uh losing my mind here um extra extra needle i got an extra chapstick and then uh, just some some band-aids a little bit of gauze of course every every hunter's best friend for their feet buco tape the best thing going uh, for blisters um, i just have a few pills and i have antibiotics um, so 500 milligram motrin um, and some heartburn medication i just keep keep in there and of course a and d ointment for me chafing um, I've tried everything. I've rucked hundreds and hundreds of miles with the military with heavy, heavy packs on my back. Um, I always chafe in my legs. I've tried everything. I've tried body glide. I've tried, you name it. I've tried everything to get rid of chafing. A&D ointment is by far the best for it. And you slap this stuff on in the morning, wherever you know you're going to get hot, you won't have any problems whatsoever, I promise you. All right, so that's my kit there. I'll get more into detail on this in some, some other video, I think. Um, but that sums up this whole pack. I literally just put this in the middle, fold it up. I just, I literally just throw that in the bottom of my pack, and this is basically everything I need um, to take out with me when I when I go. Uh, moving on, so this is my navigation stuff. So this is a book my wife got me for Christmas one year. She put some, you know, different. Uh, it's just a writing rain book. I keep notes in there. I write at night to, you know, from what we did for the day, just to keep memories of what I did. Um, and she also put some motivational outdoorman quotes in there for me. Um, this is a mountain ridge gear compass and map pack. This thing is really cool. It, um, I encourage you guys to check this out. He's actually a military veteran that makes these. Um, I just have my, my map of Montana in there or the section that we're going. And then I have in here, which is a, which I should say is a is a one by twenty four thousandths map, um, is what I use. And then in this pouch, I have my all my tags, I have my my compass, and of course my um, my actually my uh, protractor and my compass. Of course, that's what I use for navigating. Obviously, you want to know how to use these things. Uh, me personally, I use the the military grid system. It's just what I know how to navigate with. It's for me easier. It makes more sense to me than 
longitude and latitude, but um, I just throw this again. This just goes right in my um, on the back side of the, the organizer guide leather here and always, always have that on me um, along with the garment in reach. Um, this is a great little tool, hooks up to your phone, you text back home, let your family know you're doing good, has an SOS button, <coughs> excuse me, has an SOS button if something goes wrong. Um, me personally, I don't, I don't normally hunt out by myself. Um, I think there's substantial risk to that. But if I, if you, if I ever was somebody that hunted that way, this would be an absolute must. I take it with me anyway, even though I don't, I don't hunt alone deep woods very often. Um, I carry a camp saw. Um, this thing weighs nothing. I don't even know the chameleon is the main brand on it. I bought it from Amazon to trim trees up around my deer stands here. But um, this thing works great. I mean, it's razor sharp, cuts limbs, no problem. It's awesome when you're trying to just get some wood for, for a fire at night um, over carrying an axe or something of that, uh, something like that. Moving on. So, of course, everyone carries a bugle, I'm sure. This is Rocky Mountain hunting calls. Um, this is the uh, Wampity Whacker. Um, I'm not 100% not sure what what model that is, but, you know, they're, they're basically all the same. Um, me personally, I use Primo calls. That's what I um, found to work best for. Nothing against all the other ones, but Primos for me are the ones that I find the easiest to um, to call with for me anyway. But um, those are what I keep in here. So my clothing system for this year, so I'll go over what I'll be keeping in my, you know, taking with me and what I'll actually be wearing. Um, this is just a military poncho. Um, again, doesn't weigh much. Most people bring you know contractors bags and stuff for me this is this is multi multi-use i like things that you can use for anything this can cover up packs and stuff this can be used as a shelter if you need it this is always in my bag as well um, i actually put this in the bottom of my pack to keep everything dry i put it in the bottom so if i were to set my pack down and the grounds wet or something like that this is what's on the bottom to prevent the rest of stuff in my bag um, especially walking in the bottom which would be my sleeping bag from um, from getting wet so um, i sit on this when we're glassing um, if I need to, like I said, you can, with a couple trekking poles, put it up and it can be um, a bit of a shelter for you while you're glassing over a long period. So um, some people don't carry them. I, you know, I carry them. I think it's, I think it's great. It's also an extra uh, bit of protection. If it does start to really rain, this thing is, is ultra, ultra waterproof. Um, uh, puffy coat. I think most people wear a puffy coat. Uh, me, I'm running the Stone Glacier. Um, Grumman, Grumman, anyways, I don't know how exactly it's pronounced, but that's what I'm running for it. Um, packs down to, you know, a little ball this big, super warm, um, super light. Um, I haven't had any problems with it yet. I got this, this will be the first show I'm actually running it out in the mountains, but, um, you know, I wore, it, I wore it around this winter a lot, and it's, it, it is really, really, really warm, even when you're not moving. So um, I'm, I'm very interested in trying this out. If I, we'll see how cold it gets, but rain gear for me. Again, another product like my my sticks. I haven't been able to bring myself to spend the six hundred dollars on a set of, of like really really good um, rain gear. This is just Cabela's Space Rain. Again, super light, um, packs down into nothing. Uh, I've used these for a few years now, and I haven't had any problems with it. No cuts, abrasions. Um, still, it's it has never gotten me wet when I've worn them when I need them, but. Um, so for me, this is, this is enough. If I ever go somewhere that is really, really wet, like Alaska or somewhere, I might invest in a pair of really good, um, rain gear. But for me, for, you know, the Colorado, Montana, that's, that's good enough for me. I don't, I don't need anything. Um, this is just my, my gloves and stuff like that. Um, within here, this is, again, goes in my pack all the time. Um, I just have a, a head scarf, um, Again, really good for keeping you cool, get it wet, put it around your neck. I wear one of these a lot overseas, around your neck and everything else like that. Does a good job of keeping the sun off you. Um, super light, but I prefer this really over any other face mask. But um, I do have a merino beanie, merino neck gaiter, and then the merino gloves from Kuyu in the uh, Verde 2.0. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, color scheme there, but those are always in my, um, always in my, in my bag with my, my puffy coat. So, um, just one of the things I carry in my pack all the time. This is my stuff that I will not be actually wearing on the walk in. These are things that I bring separately. So, um, 
pair of thick gloves. It does get cooler. That's my pillow for when I sleep. Um, I don't know about you guys. Some people put stuff on my back for clothes. I can't sleep like that. Um, I'm a big enough guy. I'll carry the extra ounce and a half for a blow-up pillow. This is the Nemo uh, Philo Deluxe. Super nice. Really like that. I would not camp without that out in the backcountry. I sleep so much better with a, with an actual pillow. Extra pair of boxers. Um, extra shirt. This is the Merino Merino short sleeve. Um, my Kuyu. Um, I'm, I'm wearing the Peloton um, shirt this year. This is just the backup just in case, but um, that's what I'm going to go with. I have my, and my hoodie, Kuyu um, wool hoodie. Got my Merino wool under. These are Badlands. I've had these for years. They work great. I um, haven't any issues with them. Badlands upper and um, tops and bottoms for um, insulating if it gets a little chilly. I have my Yukon Gators. Again, Kuyu Yukon Gators. Great for the morning when it's wet and dewy. And of course, an extra, extra pair of socks. So I carry one extra pair of underwear, one extra pair of socks, and I just rotate those out um, every day while I'm out in the while I'm out there, let them, let them dry out and everything else like that. Um, wool is, and I'm sure most of you are aware, wool is really good for um, not stinking like the um, like the synthetic fabrics do. But again, it depends on where you're at. Um, with what you want to wear. If it's really, really hot, I prefer the synthetic over that because of the way that it wicks moisture over the over the wool. Um, it should be the other way around. If it's really, really hot, I prefer the wool because of the way it wicks moisture, it holds the moisture on you. It pulls it away, but you know it dries on itself, whereas that just pulls it out um, with that. So it depends on how warm it's going to be. Um, I may switch these two, these two out for what I'm actually wearing, but um, I've got them both in there. For my boots I'm running I, I got these just a couple weeks ago um, I used to use the Solomon quests um, I rolled my ankle running a few weeks ago and I don't know I started getting really bad arch pain in my right foot um, so um, I, where we're going is going to be significantly steeper than the place I've hunted in the past I decided to go with like a technical mountaineering boot to for side hilling and you know really biting into the edge there um, going up there these fit great even um, I definitely want to get a half size bigger when you order them they fit great I am having problems with my arches but that's not because of these boots it's because I rolled my ankle a few weeks ago and I'm compensating I think on on that um, compensating with those uh, with that um, for my setup my um, chest rig set up here um, we are going to be in grizzly country um, I am this safe just for anybody that is interested uh, you know the gun guys out there that you know are saying he's waving the gun around it's uh I'm running the Glock 20 10 millimeter um, in here what I'm actually going to run is the Underwood Lee Defense Extreme Penetrator alternating with a um, with a hollow point um, my the way my thinking behind it is you know one to one to kill them one for pain and alternate them as, as you're pumping them into them if you need to um, so that's what we'll have there um, and that is the gun that i'm running i run a serpent holster on the side i'm very familiar with this i like the double retention on it um, the way that i have this set up on here is ultra ultra tight to my chest and a very very quick and easy draw cycle out of this compared to the ones that come underneath or when you have to un velcro or even when it's on for me even when it's on the hip um, it's not as quick as I can get it out of here it's always there always loaded um, so I, I am one that carries a pistol and bear spray um, I know some people just carry the bear spray or just the pistol me I'm, I'm gonna go with both of them if I need to um, this is the Alaska Guide Creations chest rig um, I have Vortex Viper HD 10x42s um, in there. I have the, in the front here, I just have the Ranger uh, 1000. I think this is the older older model they have from a few years ago. Never did. I've never done me wrong. Worked great every time. Um, for my range finder, the other things I keep in here is I have my, my wind checker. My little bottle of wind checker in there. 
And on the side, I keep an extra battery for my rangefinder. And I also will keep my extra, oh, and some, just some Zeiss cleaning wipes for my, um, for my optics. And I also keep my, the calls that I am not using will stay in here. Um, and I keep some of my other, other non-read or no, non-diaphragm calls down in here. So just the elk reel, that's a really good cow call if anyone's looking for one. And then, um, I don't remember what this one is, but you know, just a slide, slide read call on there. Um, they'll stay in the bottom then. And then the diaphragms that I use, I just, I just keep at the top right there. I don't use them, so. And then finally, the clothes that I'll actually be wearing in, got my hat, of course, very suck. Um, hat with Hellcats on the back, which is the current unit that I'm in. Um, I have, these are the Stone Glacier socks. I don't know what the models are. Um, I was using um, First Light wool, wool socks, um, which were great, but um, I found that these ones, they are foot specific. Um, actually did a better job of keeping me from getting blisters or hot spots. <coughs> Excuse me. And on my feet compared to the wool ones, I think because it wicks moisture better than wool does <clears throat> in the long run. It really gets the moisture off your feet, so it can be evaporated through the shoe. But um, I, I like these socks. For sure, I've used these, and I like them better than the, you know. So I will be wearing the Stone Glacier socks this year. Um, Kafaru belt, great for um, great for a pack belt because when you put this on, um, it does not rub. It does not get caught on it. It, it sits nice and flat underneath the pack belt. So um, <clears throat> you definitely want to invest in a, in a good pack belt. Um, you don't want to find out that you got a bad belt once you get out there. Um, again, this is this is what I, as of right now, will be doing. This is the, the Peloton um, short sleeve, short sleeve crew. Um, these are these are my boxers. I use the longer ones because again, I, I do chafe on my thighs, but I like the longer boxer. Um, these are the Arrow Wool, First Light Arrow Wool. No, First Light Dobson. Um, first Light Dobson um, boxers and the other pair were in there. Um, these are, my pants are the Kuyu Attack pants. Um, I do have a set of Tiburon pants, depending on how warm it's gonna be. Um, <clears throat> what I do for weather is I normally check to see what the weather has been for the previous 10 years during that cycle that I've been there. I take the highest temperature, the lowest temperature, and I plan based on um, that temperature swing over the last 10 years. Um, for me, the Tiburon pants are awesome during the day in hot climates, um, but the minute that sun starts to go down up the mountains, it starts to chill off, especially if you have a, um, a, a breeze or a steady, steady wind coming in. Those Tiburon pants can get real chilly when you're sitting up on a ridge at night. Um, and I usually end up putting on my, my space rain pants to, to block the wind from going through there. Um, but these, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with these this year over the Tiburon just for that one reason. These are nice, or, or even, they, these are nice in warmer climates as well. Not as cool as the Tiburons, but these are, as far as an all around mountain pant, I think are, are better. Um, I did try the Stone Glacier pants. I know people swear by those ones. Um, there were a few things I did not like about them. Um, I won't, I won't get into that right now, but um, I ended up not using, I ended up sending those back and just stuck with my with my attack pants that I've always used. But other than that, that is my setup for this year. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about what I have in here, um, you know, how I like different equipment, please feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, I'll try to get to any questions that you guys might have. Um, other than that, um, happy hunting this year. Um, hopefully I will be able to come out with a few a uh, few additional videos regarding, you know, and get into more specifics as to, to some of my setup here and why I like some of this equipment over other equipment I've used and what equipment I have used in the past. And I'll tell you what, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and why I ended up on my, my stuff here um, as I do research and research and research down into the ground, the stuff. Um, my food this year, um, I, I am sitting pretty good. I'll probably do one video on food, um, you know, based on, you know, my height and weight. Um, how many macros I get, um, what my weight is right now. I've, I've managed to get my food system down to over 140 calories per ounce. Um, I'm, I'm sitting around, I think, 3,200 calories a day right now, which is more than I need for heavy exertion, even as a guy of my size. Um, and I'm less than a pound and a half per day of food. Um, and that includes one 
one dehydrated meal. So I'm um, sitting really good on my on my food this year. I'm really happy with how I got everything figured out, and that was that'll be more than enough for me. I know how how I eat, and what I do, and that'll be that'll be more than enough for me for this year. But um, if anyone's interested, I do have a spreadsheet I developed with one of my friends that does all this type stuff. Um, and we'll weigh out everything down to down to the down to the you know point tenth of an ounce to to really get it, and it will. Um, it's what I use to figure out my weights and things like that. But other than that, again, I hope you enjoyed, um, and hopefully this uh, this was informative. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, thanks again for watching.